Hello and welcome all my neighbors. Glad to have you with me on this on a special day and the reason why it's a special day is because I told you that I would not be uploading any content until Friday. Well, I got news for you. Hi, I'm here. So, the game's called Cupid and it's a free-to-play visual novel um, and it's... I, I turned off the mature content because I didn't, you know, just in case the kids were gonna watch it, so good thing they gave me the hour option um, and also I wanted to let you know that I might be actually continuing this series because of the game wrapped me in uh, kind of in, in the same kind of way that uh, to the moon wrapped me in um, so anyways thank you guys for being with me and I, I just wanted to you know try and post a video as soon as I possible and I know yes loss of sleep not good not good but it's okay because Doing this really makes me happy, and as long as I'm making you happy, it makes me happy, and we're all happy, and it's nice. And uh, anyways, without further wasting your time, or mine, or anything else, um, we're gonna get in the video. Okay, in three, two, one. Start. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. There's no need to explain, it's only natural. A mother loves her daughter more than anything else in the world. He hates you, doesn't he? Well, that got weird fast. The whole lot of them despise you, don't they? Chasing you into the forest and gouging a hole into your leg. Well, this is getting rather a repetition of a horror -y game. All because you smiled at their husbands. And you know what? You deserve it. Do I? I don't think I deserve anything. You freak? You disgusting, horrible, filthy little girl. What is this talking about? Didn't I tell you to stay away from them? Ooh, you never listen. Serves you right for being the dirty girl you are. This is getting creepy. But you don't have to worry, my darling. <laughs> it's alright. Even if the whole world wishes you dead, I promise you this. I would not wish that on anybody. So I guess the whole world isn't the whole world because I'm not the whole world. Your mother will always be by your side. Well, I don't think so. Well, sometimes. Maybe. Yeah. But so will your father. Remember that. Priest. My goodness, child. Whatever has happened to you? Priest, what the hell? A girl was slumped in the doorway. Is that me? Soaked by the rain. Her legs were covered in dirt and blood. This does not seem good. She lifted her head upon hearing the priest's voice that stared at him with a blank... With a blank eyes. I'd say with a blank stare, but okay, sure. Question, question. Uh, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. She hobbled forward, her bloody leg giving way. Automatically, the priest rushed forward to steady her. Years of spiritual training had prepared him for the most unexpected guest to his church. He sprung into action. He ushered her to a pew, brought out some clean cloth and antiseptic, and began to bandage the wound on her leg. Well, that's nice of him. Yet, throughout all this, he found that he couldn't take his eyes off her. That's creepy. No, you can stay away now. I don't like you. He would be gazing at the roll of bandages in his hand, deciding how to tie them. And then out of nowhere, he would be staring into your eyes. Even with all the mud and grime smeared across her face, he couldn't deny that she was absolutely beautiful. This is weird. I think we don't need to know. How old was she? 20? 18? Sixteen is too young. Her face was so young. The priest had long since aged past his desire for the opposite sex. But somehow, something about her enraptured him. 
Well, it's weird. When he realized his own thoughts, he quickly steered his mind towards the other matters. Well, that's good. <clears throat> Stop with the creepiness, stupid. <sighs> Priest, my child, what happened to you? She seemed to take all the time in the world before responding. I don't know. This is weird. Yeah. He looked at me. Looked. Looked, questioned the priest. He looked at me and he touched me. Well, this is not good. No, no, no stop that. And he started to kiss me. And did you, did you feel the same way? Because if you didn't, then this is very wrong. Then he realized with a jolt of anger what she meant. Yo, oh, okay, so now it is going in the wrong direction. It was happening more and more often nowadays, which is very bad. We should really teach the kids, show them that this is not good, and this is not what is respectful towards women. Women's rights, bro. Women's rights. The young men of Francis's days were spirited, uncontrollable ruffians. Ruffians. I don't know if I'm saying that right. A lady walking home by herself one night would be prey to a few number of them. That's really bad. <laughs> I'm glad I don't live in France. No offense to the people who live in France, but lust. One of the one of the seven deadly sins, the one that the priest personally despised the most, but for some reason still has the thoughts in his head. Fur furring, furrowing his brow in sorrow, the priest laid a hand on her thigh. Really? That's a little weird. Stop it. Stop with the thigh. You are safe now, child. God's house is the sanctuary for the faithful. Is your hand still on my thigh? I don't think he'll protect me. He looked at her in confusion. Stop putting your hand on my thigh. You see, father, I have sinned again. How so? Right there among the pews, before the altar of God, she bowed her head. I'm sorry. Was she apologizing to him or someone else? Well, is your hand, is his hand still on your thigh? Her hair hid her face and her eyes, and the priest could make neither head nor tail of her. Well, that's good. I don't want you to make neither head nor tail. He suddenly realized, oh yeah, see, there it is. His hand was still on her thigh. He hurriedly drew it away. Yeah, stop that, all right, you creepy old man. Stop it. I am sorry. No, you're not. You're just a weird weirdo. She repeated this phrase over and over. I'm sorry, for I have sinned. I'm sorry, for I have sinned. After a while, the priest got up. Well, good. Don't fret, child. You are not to blame. Well, yes. Yeah, well. No, but you are. <clears throat> I will contact the local constable. But in the meantime, you are free to make yourself at home here. I'm all set. I'd like to leave. I'd already like to leave. I will fetch you a hot drink. Yeah, it's good. When you leave, I'm going to leave. He patted her head and had left to go to the back room. Good. Go away. She remained seated on the pew, her head bent forward, and, um, I would like to leave. As the priest's footsteps faded away, the entire church fell into silence. Ooh, it got silent. Okay. Alright. There's the, there's the no music. This is weird. Got to click again. Okay. Now that it was dead of night, the clouds covered the sky. Barely a silver of moonlight filtered through the stained glass. Oh, I see that. That's nice. Okay. The girl sat alone in a ring of darkness. She opened her mouth. Now I know. If I may say my piece, surely. Yes, yes, mother. Ooh, ooh, she's talking to her. Okay, maybe her mother has passed. That's interesting. But he is so very kind. No, leave. Leave. Haven't you learned your lesson, you idiot? I fear for your safety. Yeah, you truly are an idiot. Haven't you learned your lesson? You were injured because of your own doing. Well, okay, I wouldn't say that. But, and you dare tempt fate again? I'm sorry, mother. I just thought it'd be 
it better to eat and sleep first before I left. Please don't be angry. Uh, then stop your disobedience. I only want you to be safe, dearest. So yeah, stop the disobedience. Jeez, just listen to your weird conscience. That's weird. If you do not want me to be angry, then don't give me a reason to be. Haven't I told you time and time again that the world is full of beasts? Unfortunately, they are, and, and, and we got to take control, man. If only you were not like this. You saw the way that the priest looked at you, didn't you? And still, you insist on staying? Where is your head? I understand. I shall leave at once. How am I going to mind you like this? You attract so much misfortune everywhere you go. Well, I would think the misfortune ends up coming toward her instead of anything else. This is all your fault, my poor child. This is all your fault. Yes. Why must you be like this? You are blight to my heart. Now she's going to leave and cry herself to sleep somewhere else. I'm sorry. It is... Uh, it's all my fault. Yes, it is. This girl sat in silence. Mother was right, after all. She was always right. Always. Everything was her fault. Well, I wouldn't say... Stop blaming yourself, because that's really going to hurt you even further. Her fist shook with a mixture of fear and conviction. She had to do penance. Mother, give me strength. There is something I wish to do. The girl rose from the pew. In front of her was the altar, and on top of the altar was an ornately decorated cross. It was as wide as her head, and the tip of the cross had been crafted in such that it was razor sharp. She let the view, knelt briefly, and then walked over to the altar. Don't tell me. You're quite sure you're doing this. The girl's arm trembled over so slightly. What other way is there for me to atone? She picked up the cross. Oh, my darling daughter. Mother is proud of you. Oh, don't you dare. Slowly, she brought the sharp end close to her face. So close that it hovered above her left eye. And then she... Oh, that was bad. Are you, are you alive still? Chapter 1. Oh, this is a longer one than I thought it was going to be. A scuffy young girl in tattered clothes peeked through the open gates of Chateau de Sommel. I don't know if I said that right, but if I did, leave a like and, look, and comment down below, of course. Alright. An afternoon gather was being held in its gardens. People from high class estates would stroll around the man manicured gardens while chatting loudly with one another. Oh, that's nice. There were beautiful ladies clad in silk and velvet, their necks adorned with pearls and jewels. A variety of foods was displayed on the tables. The girl star stared at the food. She hadn't eaten properly for the past few days. Well, that's... You should probably eat. Are you hungry, child? Are you hungry, child? Yeah. Yes, mother. Don't you worry. Mother will provide. You do not need those high-class foods anyways. They will upset your stomach. Now we've stayed long enough, let us leave. Really, surely we can look around for a bit. It's still a little early. There was something else that called to her, other than the party itself. She walked to and fro from the gate, peeking around the crowd, despite the urgings of mothers to leave, of her mother to leave. Just a tiny glance would be enough. The girl smiled at the thought of him. Oh, this is not good. Go away. Go away. No. The owner of the chateau, the Marquis de Glil. The girl was drawn to him. He wasn't the same as other people. He seemed different. Different somehow. Well, then you should stay away. I think you should stay away. He was kind to her and would always hand her food when she delivered flowers. That's kind of nice. Her heart felt at ease with him. He is the same as everyone. I do not care for him. Well, uh, these are two stupid choices, so... 
Mother would probably say I do not care for him. But it, I wish you would stop oogling some man with like a common. Well, that's not very nice. I just want to see you, Mother. What for? What good does he present presence to you? I I. He makes me feel that there are still good people in the world, Mother. Uh, there are no good people in the world, child, or it's hard to say. It's kind of hard to say, I would think. It's hard to see, her, of course, my dear. We do not know the real intentions people have. One can hope that real ch charity exists, but even good people will always put their needs first. Well, sometimes. I don't necessarily put my needs first because, you know, I'm here with you and I don't really care what happens. Well, I mean, I care, but I mean, like, as long as we are both, we are all, both, <laughs> we are all happy in this awesome YouTube relationship, then I'm happy, and it makes me happy to know that you guys are happy, and thank you. Okay, so we're going to continue. Even your precious Miraculous. Don't you think I'm a good person, Mother? Of course I do. Poor child, you are special. Haven't I raised you as such? I tried my best, my dearest. Yes, Mother. You keep me right. I love you. Well, you, she's a horrible mother, just saying. There's really bad mothering skills. The girl stared at her shoes and looked around for a bit, hoping for just a glance before she left. And there he was. There was no harm in looking. There was no harm in looking, she reasoned. She would never enter the Marquis world. Let her heart be filled with hope. He turned his eyes in her direction. Did he smile at her? The girl's heart stopped. Did he recognize her? She beamed. My, is this creature definitely as well as dumb? Court Lady One. Okay, this is weird. It might be, poor thing. Mademoiselle. A voice called to the rose girl. She gasped. It seemed that somebody else had noticed her presence. Well, that's not good. Go away, go away. She turned to leave. No, 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 my dear. Poor little creature. Don't run away. Charlotte, she stinks. Don't touch her. Came to crash the party, little urchin. Are you hungry? Her stomach gave a low grumble. She was always hungry, it seemed, no matter how much or how little she ate. Encouraged by the kindness the Marquis had shown her, the girl approached the women. She teetered towards the table. What are you selling? What are you selling? I don't know what that said. Ah, fudge. I can't ha I don't have a buck button, so look at this poor creature. Is she selling roses? Why are you talking to me like an object rather than a person, a human being? I wonder what time zone this was set in. Is she selling roses? These are all ugly ones. But not as appealing as the rage she is covering herself in. Are you trying your best to be this repulsive? No, don't be mean, Antoniette. Antoniette? Perhaps it's commoner fashion nowadays. Oh, really? You high-class pieces of crap. They laughed while gawking at her and her wares. You bitch! Oh my, she is only... She only has one eye. Ghastly, but I can't look away. The other lady nodded her head. Like a sideshow attraction, you mean? Freaks at the carnivals. She's... Dear darling in her own dirty monstrous way, maybe we can keep it. You bitches, leave me alone. Hello, do you want some bread, urchin? Bitch. Well, speak up. Maybe her tongue is short. Add that to the list of her darling qualities. Bitches. Oh, they're horrible. Quiet, Antoinette. Come on, don't be shy. Do you want some food? Let us hear you speak. Yes, madam. What? Yes, madam. It would be grateful. One of the ladies clapped in mockery at her reply because they're assholes. 
Oh, she talks! The ladies handed her bread, but it was snatched away before she could, before her fingers grazed it. <laughs> Not before you dance for us first. You can leave. Leave. I'd leave. I would have left already. Oh, make her do a handstand. I've seen one of those street people do that. Quite marvelous. Now, I'd like to see that. This party's getting quite boring. Well, come on, my bet. My bet. My bet. What does that mean? I mean, uh, uh, stupid girl. Because she's not one. She's awesome. Stop it. Stop crying. Dance for your food. The girl looked at the beautiful, cruel faces of the women. That looked on to them. Come on. It was burning desire to hurt something. Simply because they could. She knew that look. Before she, t before they touched her and hurt her, that had that look burning in their eyes. Oh, look at what you did, caught it. She's shivering like a leaf, poor thing. The lady was laughing as she said those words. I didn't do anything. She should be grateful we're even offering her this much. This is so horrible. I don't even know why. Cupid sounds like such a great thing, and this is just horrible. <clears throat> I didn't do anything. She should be grateful that we're offering her this much. You're offering her basically a shit turd on a platter. Don't take it. Leave, girl. Leave, Rose. Besides, the commoners were supposed to be jolly in their misery. Well, no. No, we're not. We're just gonna leave because you're stupid. Ugh. Come on, girl. Show us your joy. The girl moved away as they laughed. Mother, please save me. Mother, yes. Didn't I tell you to leave? Didn't I tell you people are cruel? Didn't I tell you to leave? It's insolent child. Now you call for me? Try to deal with the situation yourself. You have put yourself in this position anyways. I hope you learn your lesson. Hey there. A child's voice called out from behind her. It belonged to a girl around seven with chubby cheeks and a look of curiosity in her eyes. She wore an old blue dress, somewhat patched at the corners, but kept clean and tidy. Oh, crap, I can go back? Oh, no way. She wore an old blue dress, somewhat patched at the corners, but kept clean and tidy. Yes. She was not rich, but she had an air as if she owned the ground she stood on. Hmm, another commoner of the party uh, absolutely teeming with them. The Marquis loved these things. Heard the, he picks them randomly off the, from the street. Maybe I should get me one too. Ooh, she looks pissed. She's about to do some awesome, awesome beatdowns. Do you think it's fashionable abroad in this, in his birth country? I mean, yo, bitch, you about to get owned by some commoners, Persia? No, no, I heard that he was from India. I heard a rumor that he's a bastard son from Greek Queen. Really? Goodness, that is so far-fetched. Yes, well, like the Pokemon? No, this is bad. Okay, I'm sorry. I could barely pronounce his name, though he really should change it to something more acceptable. Who knows what kind of demons he might attract with such a blast from his name. Why are you guys still listening? Why don't you just leave? Ah, it must be why all these nasty, horrid little creatures flock around him. Well, you're the nasty, horrid creatures because he doesn't like you as much as he likes the commoners. That's why he has the commoners there. Bitch! You just got served. Oh. Hmm, devil or not, I'll forgive him if he kisses my hand. Yeah? Yeah? What about slaps you across the face, because that's what you deserve? Uh! What? The ladies laughed. So, love, aren't you shameless? Don't lie, we all know why we're here. 
The ladies gossiped amongst themselves, openly ignoring the girl. Well, that's good. The young girl took the lighting with a shrug. She approached the table and asserted her presence. What you doing? Goodness, they don't take a hint, do they? Well, we don't take a hint from stupid bimbos like you. Throw something shiny, it might distract them. Hmm. Huh. Really? Hey, you've been holding that bread for a long time. You know, these two women, I think, have enough power to kill all these the three women that in the stupid room. Aren't you gonna give it to her? She pointed at the shabby rose vendor. Why do you care? Do you want the bread for yourself? Ooh, I it sounds like they're just gonna get into a cat fight right here. I bet she's hungry too. I know, maybe you should toss the bread and see if they'll fight for it. The ladies laughed to themselves. The girl stared at them with confusion. Her brows furrowed in the childlike understanding. Next thing everyone knew, she had swiped the bread from the woman's hand. Oh my! How, how rude! How rude of you to be bitches! And you know what? It's what you deserve. It's what you get. Horrible filthy girl, give that back! No, I don't think we will. The girl sniffed the piece of bread and nibbled at the surface. Mmm, yummy, it's still warm. She shoved the bread in her in the urchin's mount in urchin's face. The scrumptious scent of the bread flooded the the rose girl's nose. Lick it, the sagged birder. Tastes good. No, oh, you devil child, give that back. The urchin licked it. Her tongue was coated in sweatness. She stood there, squeezing the taste in her tongue. The girl grinned at her, and she couldn't help but grin back. Sorry, here you go. It's all yours. Ugh, disgusting. Like we're going to eat anything that's been in your filthy mouths. Yeah, well, you did lick it. Wow, so this one's... This is ours now. You ladies are so nice. Yeah. Yeah. What you get? What you get? Now what are you going to do? Cheeky little brat. I'll have you thrown out of this party. I'll have you... I think you're going to be removed by this man right here. Ha ha! Ha ha! A young man strode to the commotion. A sweet scent lingered as he passed. Yes, here he is to save the day. The rose girl felt her mouth well up. His presence filled her body almost as if her hunger was abated. Gone, man, gone. No hunger at all. She blushed furiously. Her, his presence filled her body almost as if her hunger was a bit... Why did I already read that? Okay. What a strange effect he had. Ladies. Oh, a uh, sire Gilm. 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 I, I don't know how I'm saying this right. I just came to check in on my esteemed guests. Yes. Is everything all right? Are you enjoying yourselves? One of the ladies started fanning herself with obvious annoyance. Hmm. I wonder why. Well, these little beasts have been harassing us. Yes, my lord. We are just minding our own business when this girl swiped the food off our table. Horrible little nits. Really, the girl stuck out her tongue at them. A lady wiped her eye in mock, in mock tears. Yeah, right. See, look at that. It's absolutely monstrous how these children act around adults now. He's like, uh, really? Really? We're going there? We're going there. Come on. There was no respect, Minister. Eh? I worry for the next generation. Yeah, I worry for your generation, because it apparently sucks. I shall let don't cry. Yeah, fake cry. Okay, well, my lord... We would all breathe a little easier if those children were sent on their way. Yes, who knows what kinds of mischief they might get, be up to. 
They might set fire to the tables, you see. Oh. Or steal our jewelry. In fact, I think my pocket watch is missing. Really? No, how unfortunate. One of the ladies continued her childish wailing. It is mother. It is mother. <laughs> It's unfortunate how all of you, how you allow our your important guests to be traded this way. You guys are not important, just so you know. The commoners are the most important. That's that's why he has the sly face right here. Please deal with it, these vermin. Throw them out now. Oh, oh, my sweet ladies, I am stricken with grief at your misfortunes. Allow me to offer my heartfelt apologies. Unfortunately, this child is my important guest today, and you are, sad to say, uh, paltry squatters. Basically, you're not. So, shoo shoo, run along now. <laughs> Excuse me? What do you mean? Madame Charlotte of Montpellier, I don't remember sending you an invite. Oh, 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 really? Really? Same for you, Attorney at Renz and Lady Claudette of Lyon. Oh, oh, the, mo the people I invited are huge patrons of music. That is why they are here today. Oh, he is doing good. They came to listen to Mosette. Catherine and Louis Pared. I'm really hoping I'm saying this right. If I am, please say yes in the comments down below and please like the video if I am. I really hope. <laughs> I love you all. She is the seven year old piano protege who played for the Queen last summer. Really? The man pointed at the girl, busy chewing her half of the bread. The Rose Girls just stared at the unfolding situation. Well, well, that's, that's... I'm sure you were aware of that, were you not? Core Lady 3 is silent. No matter. I am always happy to see you, ladies. It is my pleasure to have you here. But I hope you don't mind giving some of the food away to, the to, to my townspeople. You know, but I hope you don't mind giving someone some of the food away to my townspeople. You know, my greatest people. Not you, of course, because you're horrible. Uh, I'm just being... That is why I keep my gates open. Yes, because he does not frown upon other newcomers who come into his house. My servers are instructed to serve anyone who passes by, not just my guests. Of course, you should have already knew that, right, ladies? But, 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 don't you fret, my darlings. There is plenty more to be served. Don't worry, I have all the money. And, and I just like giving it away to the charities, you know, in my spare time. These ladies blushed in embarrassment. One of them began to fan herself even faster. <laughs> Excuse me. The Marcus walked up to the two girls. Oh, hello. Uh, you're a little shy, aren't you? The Rose Girl's heart beat so fast it made her head feel light and dizzy. She had never been this close to him. Or he's never been here this close to her. Maybe yes. Ooh, who knows? I made her feel. It made her. Uh, pfft, I made her. It made her feel a mixture of fear and elation. Really, Lady Catherine, your father has been looking for you. It's her. I think that's that's what she's talking about. It's almost time for your performance. The girl looked up at the Marquis and did a little curtsy. And, uh, run along. My apologies, sire. I didn't mean to cause any clatter. Give him a chuckle. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Oh, I saw the whole thing, Mashale. You put those ladies in their place, which is wonderful. Thank you for doing that. 
they were being mean to her. Oh, thank you for being so nice! Oh, I love her nice. Oh. Gimme narrowed his eyes at the quiet girl. She hid behind her basket of basket of roses. She couldn't look at him directly. She was like the sun. Aww. It hurt just to be in his presence. Oh, that's too bad. Well, you know, you're blushing though. It's so wonderful. Yet there was relief in her heart. As he stepped closer to her, I've seen you before, haven't I? The rose girl nodded and made a curtsy. I I deliver roses to your house sometimes, sire. Aw! Yes, the girl with the sweetest face. The rose girl blushed. I love your roses, by the way. Aw! Aw! They stay fresh longer than they should. You've tended to them with love. Aww. Aww. Thank you, sire. Do you have a name, young lady? Hmm. I... Um, uh... What's the matter? It's alright, young lady, if you'd rather. Let's call her Rose, Catherine says. Yay! Rosa. Rosa or Rose? Hmm. Rosa. Okay, Rosa. Sorry, my bad. Rosa, it fits her. I think she forgot her name or she lost it. Uh, well, yeah, you know. Happens. The Marquis nodded wisely. A valid point. Or, you know, she may have, you know, forgotten her memory. And Rosa sounds like a good name for her anyways. She's wonderful. Hmm, are you alright with that, Rosa? Yes. Come on, Rosa, you'll watch me play, right? I... Her eyes darted from the girl to the marches. Oh, Sir Gilly doesn't mind. Gilly? He's really nice to me and my family. He helps the people around town, too. He won't throw you out. The marches held his right hand in the air as if swearing on an oath. I won't. And obviously, her pretty face and smile gives it away that really, he's really a nice guy. I think. Either that, or this is just a disguise to keep everybody else from saying anything else. So, I don't know. See? Come on, you're invited now. You are my special guest. That's getting a little creepy now. That's getting really... Uh, there's plenty of feud inside too, Rosa. Please help yourself. Th thank you, sire. Rosa is coming. Yay! Now, this is my first public performance, Rosa. I am a bit nervous. Catherine scratched her head. What will I do if I make a mistake? Papa will be very upset. The Marcus knelt in front of Catherine and rubbed her shoulders fondly. You won't make a mistake, Miss Shirley. As long as you put your heart into the keys... Play to touch your audience, and any mistake won't matter. That is wonderful. Wonderful words you have. I hope you're not a douche, Nugget. Do you understand? Well, of course. You stared at the Marcus. Not really. Really? Really? You don't understand what he said? I fully understand. The man chuckled. You will someday. <laughs> Just plan the f your first song with me in your mind, will you? Something that you will, that you think will make me smile. Something that you think will make me smile, not something that you like about him. That's very interesting words you have there. That's making me really wonder about you. He beheld Catherine's clear young eyes in his gaze. He kissed her hand. It was covered with the sticky sugar and breadcrumbs. Hmm. All right. Well, that's weird. Anyways, I want to leave it here because I want to stick keep you on a cliffhanger. So if you liked the video, please tap that like button and comment if you 
have anything to say. Doesn't matter. I don't care. Well, I do care. I love your comment. So, and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to see more content because it's getting real over here. Alright. Well, I will see you later. Spidey T. Out.